recently a lot of questions have come up about tuning and tightening a snare drum, especially in a particular forum that I chat in, a drum forum, a drum chat on Discord. A lot of people have been asking about how to tune their snare. It's not sounding right. What do I do? How do I make it do this and that? So I figured I'd do a quick video on snare tuning and talk about some of my tricks and techniques. I know everybody's got their own. I know there's lots of different recommendations out there. I know there's a million YouTube videos and books. So this is just from my experience, and I am not Johnny Monster Player, that's for sure, but I am a professional who has done this for over 30 years, uh, 45 years, and I've been teaching for over 30 years. So I have some concept here of what I'm talking about. So here's some of my tips and tricks on how to tune a snare drum and make it sound good. Now this one sounds pretty good. It's not a, uh, it's a thin model. It's not a piccolo, but it's not a, a, a oversized snare. It is a standard 14 and a half um, diameter. It sounds pretty good. It sounds good playing with the snares on with sticks and sounds good with the snares off using it like a timbali or a tom-tom. Sounds good both ways. Can we make a cheap knockoff of a pearl export, a cheap Asian knockoff, sound pretty good? We're gonna find out here. Listen to what this sounds like, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Now this is a deeper drum. And it is a metal drum, not a wood drum, so it's modeled after the Pearl Export, even though it's not a Pearl Export. Um, so it's going to sound deeper to begin with, but you can also tell this thing has been beat to heck. Um, it's actually got a, a couple of rips that you'll see a little bit later in the head, and I do not have another one to replace it with. It's already been cheesily repaired with a piece of duct tape once. It's got all kinds of pits in it. And... Uh, there's a lot of play in the head. It's just on, on both sides, actually, on the snare side and the batter side. It's loose, and it just it needs some help. It needs some address. So if you, you know, take a look. You can even see the pits when you look through the drum there. But, um, you know, there's a lot of play in the snare, which is okay. It depends on how you want to use the snare. If you're going to flip the snare switch off like I did in the first segment of video there, then you need to have some looseness. But if not, there's a little trick I'm going to show you guys later for making a super snare. It's out of tune. You can't hear that, but trust me, it is. Uh, it's loose on top. There's the rip or two in the drum head. Pits everywhere. This thing's been battered by some would-be slash wannabe um, Lars Ulrich-influenced uh, uh, players. <laughs> and also, uh, I think, some, uh, some Johnny Funksters. But it has been... It has been hammered. Uh, and the head itself, as you can see, is not a well-known brand name. Uh, the drum isn't in bad shape, but it's starting to rust. It's got some issues. And uh, the hardware is not of super high quality. So can we make this thing sound a lot closer to that wooden drum from the first segment? Let's find out. OK, the first thing you need to do before you start working on any of these drums is make sure you have your tools in place. And there's some basic tools that you need. Not hard to find, but you're gonna need them. And you should, if you're gonna play a lot, if you're rehearsing with a band, if you're playing with a band, if you're recording, if you take your drums out a lot, you should have these tools on hand. You'll need several different types of screwdrivers, flathead and Phillips, or one that is interchangeable and can switch heads to cover some different uh, types of screws. And unfortunately, on older drums and some of the newer ones from odd brands or whatever, they may not have standardized screws that they use or other things. So you need a couple of different ones. Something to measure with, uh, just to check. If you happen to find a random you know, drum somewhere at a sale or whatever, you may not be sure that it's a 14-inch, which is the standard for snares. So you want to have something to measure the head with. A small tape measure would be best, could fit in your pocket or maybe in your gig bag, but you know, a, a ruler or a yardstick or whatever will work fine. Uh, also, you need some needle nose pliers. Those are very important for what I'm going to show you about tightening the snare. That'll come up later. Of course, you need a drum key for tuning and tightening the heads on both sides. Drum keys are generally standardized, thankfully, 
But if you have a mid-period, you know, 80s or 90s drum, if you have an older drum from the 50s or 60s, you might wind up with uh, metric tension rods. You might wind up with an oddity like I used to have on a Slingerland drum that was uh, a flathead screwdriver. They were actually uh, tension rods, lugs, that um, had a f you, you tighten them with a flathead screwdriver instead of a regular key. So just have a variety of tools ready. And, of course, you're going to need some sticks to try out the drum uh, along the way as you're tuning and tightening. And also, uh, you know, when you think you got it in the pocket, you want to make sure it sounds good, you need to be able to play it. All right, so what should you do with all these tools in this time? Well, you're going to replace that head. Remember, this one looks like a lunar surface or some desert in Mongolia that has dry riverbeds. Well, we need to replace that, only I can't because I do not have one. I didn't prep for this video the way I should, and I'm kind of cheap. So I'm going to try to fix this one up as best as possible. But if you have a drum head that looks like this, make sure you replace it with something like a brand new emperor or ambassador. You're going to take your drum key. This is a different one than we had earlier, but they're universal, so no problem. We're going to change the head. You're going to do that. I'm going to try to smooth out some of these dimples, if at all possible. All right, so what are we going to do with that key? when we change the head or try to fix this one, which is what I'm gonna to try to do, make it as usable as possible, you're gonna go around and make sure that each tension rod has the same amount of tension. Now, do you have to do that classic star pattern all around from lug across to the other lug, across to the other lug? You can, like in every video you see on YouTube, but no, you don't have to do that, in my humble opinion. You just have to go around the drum and make sure you have the same amount of turns on each tension rod at each lug. So if I do five turns, I'm going to do five on the next one, five on the next one, all the way around. Three turns, all the way around. So when I get close to being in tune, when I think it's where I want it, I'm going to check to make sure that all the turns are the same, and then I'm going to go around, and I'm going to tap at each lug. I'm going to tap on the head inside the rim, right at each uh, lug, at each tension rod point, and make sure that the drum head is in tune with itself. If that seems true, and it's a good tension for me, and it looks like I can play on it, it's not too tight, it's not too loose, which is gonna make it sound soupy, then we're probably looking pretty good. So I've gotta tighten this one up and see what happens here, but that's how you do it. You're gonna, you're gonna check each lug each tension rod and make sure that it's in tune with itself. Okay, I've done that, and it's in tune with itself now, at least for the time being, to my liking. And you may not believe it, but it's got a little bit less divots, a little bit less dimples than before. This thing has been brutalized. It's not coming back. But it is better than it was before. Uh, believe it or not, there's less dimples and divots. Uh, it's in tune with itself. So we can proceed for purposes of this video, even though it really should be replaced, and eventually it will be. Now what? Well, you go to the bottom and you do the exact same thing. You make sure it's in tune with itself. No dimples. It's flat on a snare. The snare side head's very important. And on any double-headed drum, you have to make sure that both are in tune because they interact with each other. It's not like a concert tom. So both heads have to be taken care of. Make sure that it's seated well on the bearing edge and uh, everything's in tune with itself. And then you can move on from there. Now comes the exciting part. And now you're going to know why you need the needle nose pliers, and some help if possible. If you have a friend to help you out, that's great. If not, you can do this on your own. It's just a little bit more of a struggle. These little plastic straps are called, I just found out recently, believe it or not, after all these years, the snappy straps. The snappy straps. They could be nylon, they could be material, uh, some kind of plastic, and it is the standard way of strapping up your snare. Modern drums all use these. Now I have an older drum like an original Black Beauty. It's not like one, it's actually an original Black Beauty. And it uses a totally different mechanism. 
but most drums from let's say the 60s maybe the 50s on to now have these straps on this side it's running through the butt clip and the butt plate no jokes please and on this side, we have the snare strainer, the mechanism that turns the snare on and off. And we've got a trick, but it's important to know whether you're going to use that or not. Either way, you need the needle nose to hold the straps through the butt plate or on the other side through the snare strainer while you tighten the other side. So feed one end through the butt clip and one end through the snare strainer and tighten loosely so that one side holds it and the other side's, you know, just in there. And then we're going to make some fine adjustments and we'll tell you what to do about that. So if you have help and two pairs of needle nose, you can feed it through both sides and you can have a friend help you and pull that really tight. And if not, you're gonna to have to do this yourself one side at a time. Now it's important to know whether you are going to actually ever flip the snare strainer off. If you are going to use the drum both ways, the way it was designed, then you can't tighten it too much you need to be able to throw the snares off if you're gonna use it as a timbali or tom-tom. And there's great debate in the drumming community about whether you play brushes with snares on or snares off. So it all depends on your approach. But if you know for sure, if you're a metal drummer or you're a rock band drummer, a backbeat guy that never, ever, ever is ever gonna throw the snare strainer off, or if you want a particular drum as sort of a super snare for the studio and you use a different drum to gig with or anything like that, if you know you're not going to throw the snare strainer off, here's the trick. If you want that super snare, feed one side through the snare strainer and lock it down. Try to make sure that the snare is even in the bed and across the bottom of the snare side head. This one's off just a little bit on both sides. I'm gonna to have to jimmy that a little bit so it's center and it fits through, uh, you know, across the snare bed properly um, and make sure everything's seated right. So that's an important part. Now remember, this is important. This is only if you're not really ever gonna throw the snare strainer off. If you're going to, don't do it this way. But if you are going to leave this as a snare and you want it really tight sounding, then you're going to do this with the snare strainer open. You're going to leave one end in the snare strainer with it open in a loose position. And then on the other side, on the butt clip, you're going to grab that snappy strap with your needle nose and pull tight. Turn that thing one turn if you can and really tighten it up. And then making sure the snares are straight, you're going to lock it down super tight. When you're sure that everything is straight and correct, you've got it pulled as tight as you can on the butt plate side, you've got the snare open, you can tighten it down and then carefully close that switch. Don't do it in a jerking motion, you don't wanna pop anything, you don't know how tight you went, but you can carefully close that strainer. reality it'll sound more like this so if you did all that if it made sense to you and you paid attention to everything I said and you did it that way it should sound like this much closer to that wooden snare because all snares basically have a place that they're comfortable being tuned in and if the snares are tight and responsive it should sound like a snare drum. If you're having anything outside of that, if it's too deep, if it's too high, if it's too ringy, then you need to go back and check the fundamentals and make sure you tuned it correctly. 
One other important thing, if the snare drum or any other drum, tom-tom, whatever, is too ringy, there's a way to deal with it that doesn't involve duct tape. Now, this was uh, an attempted repair, I believe, but they were also trying to take some ring out of the head. Let me show you another way that's better, much better. Remember, some ring is good, especially live and unmiked. But if you're going to be in a mic situation or in the studio, you don't necessarily want that. You can use drum mufflers, which come with padding, or O-rings, dead ringers, uh, donuts. We used to call them donuts anyway. And uh, you can buy them for anywhere from $1 to $3 to $10 to $18 to $25 a pack. They're pretty expensive, but you don't necessarily have to do that either. Just save your old heads, your snare heads, your tom heads. Save them all as long as they're not ripped, torn, or too destroyed. And you can cut out your own donuts. You just cut out the head and cut out a circle in the center that's big enough so you have just the outer edge in a circle. Use a compass or a small symbol. And you can make your own donuts, save some money, and they make great studio and even live light muffling for your snare drum and other drums. Save some money, it's a great idea. So obviously if you're gonna make your own, you're going to discard that aluminum retainer ring on the drum head and you're really just cutting out the outside edge and then using a small enough symbol or uh, a compass or something to make a nice clean circle on the inside, cut that out and then all you have left is that, that thin, donut ring and that's perfect for muting and muffling a snare drum or other drum as necessary so that's how the professor does it and if anybody has any questions please post them below i know this video was longer than i thought it was going to be hope it wasn't too long for you but also i hope it gave you some insight if i wasn't clear if you didn't understand something go ahead and post some questions down below uh, or if you're in the discord group feel free to ask me or shout out anytime and i'll do my best to explain uh, better how to do that. But that's it. Just make sure that the heads are tuned to themselves, tight, not too tight, not too loose, that your snare is seated well. And then you're going to have to make some decisions. If you want to be able to throw the snare strainer off, you have to give, you know, a little bit here and there and have a good sound with the snare on and with it off. If you're never going to throw that snare strainer off and you want a super snare, tighten that thing down batten down the hatches with the snare strainer all the way loose as my friend joe used to say and crank that thing in lock it down and then flick that switch carefully and you will have a snare like you wouldn't believe all right that's it for this time uh, i'll see you next time around tune in and we'll uh, learn some more secrets from the drum cave see ya